They've almost finished loading our cargo. We should be ready to depart right on schedule. Or so I'm told. Excellent. Tis nice to have a smooth beginning to one's journey, at the very least. It's funny. Master Louis Soir came here on a ship very much like this one. And now, years later, the street urchin he befriended that day is bound for his mentor's homeland. With his mentor's grandchildren, no less. Aye. Tis upon reflection that every twist of time's river and fate's whims are brought into sharp relief. Thou hast matured much in the intervening years. Wert thou not caught attempting to relieve Master Louisois of his purse scant moments after he made landfall upon this dock? Oh, really? Now that's a tale I'd like to hear. Will this be your first visit to Charlie and Sir Estinian? Sir Estinian? <sighs> Are we strangers newly met? Why this stiff formality? I, uh, merely meant it as a professional courtesy, since we are now colleagues in an official sense. I'd rather you dispense with the sirs, especially in private company. Or I'll be forced to respond in kind, little Lord Alphano. You've made your point, Estinian. Painfully well. Better. Are you all right, Tataru? You seem positively distraught. Distraught? Me? Don't be silly. I think it's lovely that they get to see their homeland. It's just... We're trying to thwart the schemes of an army hell-bent on destroying the world. And, once again, I have to stay behind and worry that this is the last time I'll get to see my friends. I'll hold you to that. Ah, oh, good. You're still here. Hori! Coltine! What brings you all this way? We're to assist the Maelstrom and the Cobbles with a Lunar Primal operation, so we thought we'd see you off before heading to the tower. Flamine and the others wish you all a safe journey, and promise that they'll look after things here until you return. We will too, of course. Aye, we, your fellow scions of the Seventh Dawn, will do our part to ensure the end of the world won't happen on our watch. We set the sail. All aboard for Charlian. It's time. Then we must delay no longer. We will contact you the moment we learn aught of value. Wish us luck. Have a safe journey, and please, please, be careful.
And so you venture forth unto the unknown. A fate beyond the horizon that cannot be divined. A future undefined and in flux. In uncertain times, naught but the simplest words of wisdom will suffice. That which lives is destined to die. Love leads to loss. Every beginning has an end. Treasure every moment, every step of your descent. And there, in the depths where souls and stars rest, find your truth. The day has barely dawned, my fellow early riser. Though we're hardly alone in that. Envious of those still sleeping soundly, no doubt. Called out to you, you say? Hmm. I've heard nothing myself. In any case, I dare say the sea air will do you good. Why not join the others on deck? Charlian should be coming into view at any moment. My voice yet reaches you. I am glad. 
Hear. Feel. Think. And thus do we meet face to face at last. My warrior of light, guided by the crystal. After your sojourn in the first, I believe you have your answer. You have gained an understanding of what I truly am, what Eidolon has always been, a primal. Zodiac was created to forestall the apocalypse which threatened the ancient world and I was brought forth to bind him. Yet seven times now, those who would orchestrate a return to that bygone era have rejoined a shard to the god I had sundered. The greater his strength grows, the swifter does mine own diminish. The power to draw your mind into the rift betwixt is no longer mine to wield. Yet though it taxes me sorely, I dare not leave these words unsaid. Even bereft of my guidance, you and your companions have accepted the burden of this star's troubled past. A conjunction has begun to form, an intertwining of your time and mine. Wheels shudder and turn, conflict looms, monumental, which will decide the fate of this world and all life upon it. When you truly understand what is at stake, and your journey has prepared you to surmount the insurmountable, then shall I honor the promise made in another time, another age. Cast your peepers to the fore, folks. Charlians, just over yonder. I will not keep you further. Your traveler's heart must yearn to behold this unfamiliar land. We shall meet again, and soon. What a fine morning! Oh, oh, still a bit stiff, though. And a good morning to you, too. Taking a look at the island already? Then let's go! Let's go! Might still be room in the prow if we're lucky. Ah, the sleepers have arisen. <sighs> there she is. <laughs> Good old Charlian. Oh, I see it. Home. Home at last. Well... Maybe not in father's eyes, but we'll manage on our own, if we must. You do know you're not alone in this, don't you? 
Indeed. Tis as Sir Astinian saith. Forget not the comrades who boarded this ship at your side. I prithee. Thank you, my friends. We are ever grateful for your steadfast support. Upon arrival, we will be disembarking into the heart of Charlian proper. There is no greater concentration of wisdom in all the world. I am confident that somewhere within that center of knowledge and learning, we will find the answers we seek. Charlian, the solitary island nation of the Northern Seas. Where under the watchful gaze of Thaliac, patron deity of scholars, academics hoard all manner of knowledge and secrets. Once, they deigned to accept foreign students into a distant colony maintained in the Dravanian hinterlands. How swiftly they abandoned it once the first Garlean boot set hostile foot on Alamegan soil. So averse to the prosecution of war, these men of wisdom, your would-be allies. I thought they'd never let us off the ship. What's next then? Entry applications? Hopefully they find no cause to deny us. Hasn't Charlie and Orbit severed relations with foreign powers? Those of us without direct ties, myself included, may be refused outright. It is true that, as a nation, Charlian only forms trade agreements with a select few neutral countries. But from a practical standpoint, an island cannot afford to be overly strict with its borders. Especially not if that island's people are wholly devoted to the accumulation of knowledge. If one submits the proper paperwork, with satisfactory evidence of identity and intent, then foreigners may be granted entry. May. Quite. So let us be absolutely clear on these points before we proceed. The immigration officer will ask for your affiliation and your purpose of visit. Considering Charlian's views on intervention, I strongly suggest we avoid any mention of the Scions. Kral has laid the groundwork for us to act as associates of the students of Baldessian, and our ostensible reason for being here is to aid in their order's restoration. Grahatir, it might expedite our progress should an actual student be seen at the head of our little group. Would you mind leading the way? Of course. The immigration offices were this way, as I recall. Shall we? Greetings. We've just arrived and are eager to make our way into the city. Would you be so kind as to process our entry applications?
certainly. I see by your mark you are an Archon. I am. Grahat here of the students of Baldassian at your service. I was assigned to an Aeorsian survey team, but have returned to assist with the reformation of my order. My associates here will provide additional support. Very good. I have paperwork detailing your group and its scheduled arrival for today. And it seems some few of your companions are also Archons. If you'll step forward, we can process those applications first. Ishtola rule. See how it glows. That list is etherically linked with the citizen registry kept in the main repository. I've confirmed your status as Archons and amended your travel records accordingly. Welcome home. Now, who do we have here? Alphano Leveilleur. And Alizé Leveilleur. Your applications have also been approved. Having said that... The streets are abuzz with talk of how House Leveilleur's lord disowned his young progeny. And while such personal circumstances constitute no reason to deny you entry, I urge you to avoid exacerbating your present situation. Times are quite troubled enough already. We shall keep that in mind. These last two are not Charlian natives, but you will find their credentials are in order. An application was made in advance. Hmm. Name and occupation? An adventurer. Well, I suppose that is considered a valid calling in your native Eorzea. And it does indeed match the profile provided. You may enter. And you, sir? Estinian Valino, formerly of the Order of the Knights Dragoon in Ishgard. Formerly, at least. And what, pray tell, is your profession now? If you'll allow me... My associate is a mercenary, hired for his strength at arms. Surely you are aware of the dangers we often face on our forays into the wilderness. Mistress Baldessian, if you insist on sponsoring his entry, then so be it. But while I appreciate that desperate times call for desperate measures, I find your choice of company concerning. Be advised that even a single misstep may have severe repercussions for your organization. 
I have every confidence in my chosen company, dear and trusted comrades that they are. But I thank you for your concern. Croyle! It is good to see you. Likewise. Long voyage notwithstanding, you will seem none the worse for wear. There is much to discuss, but this is hardly the place. Let's be on our way, shall we? Oh! <laughs> Welcome, friends, to Charlian. As your mercenary, I should hope my welcome includes a generous salary. Well, I had to say something, Sir Taciturn. 